Hello everyone. Uh, today I am going to continue with the same topic which I have taken up in the last session if you remember and that was the 15th chapter of class 12 and it is called Polymers. This is my second lecture. In the first lecture I hope you remember what I have done. I have discussed all the examples of the addition polymers. I have discussed the examples of condensation polymers. I have taken up the examples of homopolymer, copolymer and other example. There is one example which I gave you. I said there is only one example in NCRT which is exactly been given as one of the best example of in fact one of the only example of condensation polymer of homopolymer type or homopolymer condensation type I would say. Now the example was nylon 6,6. .6. Nylon 6,6 .6 is nothing but it is actually made up of alpha amino caproic acid. If I am not wrong it is NH2CH2 whole fifth COOH. As I said if you remember I told you there is one thing which is very very important and that important thing is there is an intramolecular condensation which occur within the molecule and once there is an intramolecular condensation the water molecule will be removed as you can see from here if I replace, replace this H from here and a carboxylic acid may say OH is being removed I will get NH and then CH2 whole fifth CON times now this is just a linear structure which I have drawn I can even draw it in a cyclic manner as I said there will be an intramolecular cyclic condensation occur and once there is an intramolecular cyclic condensation occur can I write this there are six carbon atoms that's why I said it is called nylon 6,6 when this is being done, you will be able to see that there are 6 carbon atoms, just count them, 6 carbon atoms with this NH group, this NH group. So, if I try to condense this, I will get this molecule caprolactam. Uh, this is one of the best example of, uh, one of the example of polyamide. This is one of the example of polyamide that we have discussed in the lecture number 1. One of the another example of polyamide that we have also done in, in our le last lecture was nylon 6,6. .6. Now I am going to take up the next monomers as well as the polymers. Let us start first with one of the structure called glyptal. Glyptal has been asked in one of the CBSC paper. Of course, it was CBSC 2019. This question was asked in Delhi. It is made up of two monomers. Of course, one of them is ethylene glycol that if you remember we have done and phthalic acid. Uh, phthalic acid, if you ask me what is the IPEC name, the IUPAC name of phthalic acid is nothing but it is benzene 1,2 dicarboxylic acid. Now, just like terrene or decron, if you can see from here, it is made up of an alcohol and a carboxylic acid. That's why it is the second example of polyester. I repeat, since it is made up of two things, of course, ethylene glycol and alcohol and thylic acid, of course, a carboxylic acid. So once they condense, they are going to give you an ester. That's why this is the second example of polyester, which the first example that we have already discussed as such in our first lecture was terrene or decron, right? Now, if I try to condense again this N molecules of this and N molecules of this, you will find that H from here and the OH molecule from this thalic acid from here will condense and this OH and H from here, H from here and OH from here will be condensed and this OH with the another molecule of uh, ethylene glycol will try to condense. So once I do its polymerization, 2N water molecules or H2O molecules will be removed. So I can I write now O with the polymerization chain, then CH2, then this CH2, then I have O, then I have C double bond O, this is the C double bond O, then at ortho position I have C double bond O, and of course this OH has been removed. Uh, I can just put N times with the benzene ring at ortho position. One of the best use of glyptal is that it is used in cement, it is used asbestos and of course it is also used in paint as well as making large number of substances called varnishes. Now another example that I have to take up today is Novolac and Bacalite. 
Novolac is a linear polymer which is actually being formed from two monomers. Of course, one is phenol and formaldehyde. This is phenol and this is of course formaldehyde which is also called methanol. Now, uh, when you try to condense uh, linearly or polymerization is of phenol and methanol, methanol is done or formaldehyde is done you will find that you will get a straight chain and that straight chain is nothing but it is actually called as what? Novolac. Novolac as the name suggests I always say Novolac so uh, there is a comparison done and that comparison is nothing but with Nerolac of course it is used in paints that's why you can just link or correlate with it it is used in paints and this is how Novolac is being formed. I said when phenol and formaldehyde, their linear polymerization is done, this structure is obtained and this structure is nothing but it is actually called as linear polymerization occurs to give you an, one of the polymer which is called Novolac. So I can say that Novolac is formed by the linear polymerization of phenol and formaldehyde. Am I clear? Now, in the same way, if I now try to react phenol and formaldehyde, but now this time I am not going to do linear polymerization, but of course I want to do cross link polymerization. Once I try to form a cross link polymerization of this, I will get a three dimensional structure and of course this is nothing but it is bacalite. It has an infusible mass that we will study in our third lecture and this is called bacalite. Bacalite of course is used in switches as I said. And another thing, it is used in the uh, utensils, the handle of the utensils basically are nowadays being uh, made up of bacalite. The next thing which I have to take up is nothing but it is another example, malamine formaldehyde resin polymer. Now, if I talk about malamine, this structure which I have drawn here is nothing but it is malamine. Now, malamine as such can be remembered, we have a ring, I mean I can imagine that it is a benzene ring, but with alternate carbon and nitrogen atom, as you can see from here, we have carbon and nitrogen atom, alternate nitrogen, then carbon, then nitrogen, then carbon, nitrogen, we have alternate double bond, and on each carbon atom we have NH2 group, so there are three carbon atoms, so three NH2 group. Now, malamine and this is formaldehyde, of course, when this Former aldehyde will try to attack over here. You can easily see that it will be converted into what the same structure NH2 NH2. Here it becomes NH, and if this one of the H is shifted over here, it becomes CH2OH. So I have written NH by shifting one of the H from here to here. Can I write this as CH2OH? So it becomes NHCH2OH. This is actually called as a resin intermediate which is being formed. Now if I try to condense this, condensation can be done in this way. If this is NH2, if this is NH2, this will try to condense with another molecule where, see, if this is OH, I can remove OH from here, I can remove H from here, I can remove H from here. So as I said, if I try to remove this, or I try to condense this. This is suppose my OH and this is suppose my NH2 group. NH2. H from here and OH from here will be condensed. So you can see that this becomes NH. This whole ring remains same. Then we have NH over here and NHCH2 n times. This malamine polymer is nothing but it is used in unbreakable crockery. You are already aware of this term called bone china and that bone china or unbreakable crockery is nothing but it is actually made up of nothing but it is malamine formaldehyde resin. The next example before I should proceed with the next example I must tell you that the examples that we have done till date in our first lecture as well as in the second lecture I want to tell you that the examples which we have taken up of course, the five examples are nothing but they are the examples of polyesters. The first example which we have done was 
of course terylene in my first lecture i have taken up terylene terylene is a polyester glyphtal is also a polyester as i said you can see from here also phenol and formaldehyde this is also one of the best example of a polyester then the melamine formaldehyde resin is another one of the best example of polyester so these are the examples of polyester that we have done we have done novolac we have done bacalite we have done glyphtal we have done um, terylene or dacron and melamine formaldehyde resin now let us proceed to the next example and that are biodegradable polymers there are two biodegradable polymers before that let me take up what exactly biodegradable polymers are if i am not wrong biodegradable polymers are basically those that can be decomposed by the action of microorganisms into simple and unharmful substances most of the polymers that we come across are non biodegradable there are two polymers that are biodegradable of course we will take up one by one because these are the most important polymers one of the best example is phbv phbv can be easily remembered by this way if i say this is hydroxy p of course stands for poly i actually can recall in this way poly hydroxy butyrate co beta hydroxy valerate i repeat i said poly hydroxy butyrate co beta hydroxy valerate of course beta when i say poly beta hydroxy butyrate it has four carbon atom and valerate of course has five carbon atom so it has four carbon atom and this has five carbon atom let us quickly draw the structure of both of them and try to condense them this is butyrate 1 2 3 4 4 carbon atom and of course this is alpha and beta so on the beta position we have a oh group so the ipent name should be 3 hydroxy butanoic acid because it is on the fourth carbon third carbon atom i'm sorry now in the same way as i said valeric or valerate means five carbon atom but since it is beta my oh group will be on the third position i can even now write down its ipent name that is again same three hydroxy and of course pentanoic acid it is pentanoic acid let me condense now both of them if i try to condense as i said so many time h is always removed from the oh part and carboxylic if you come across you will see that oh is removed from that so if i try to condense this h will try to condense with another molecule which is present just nearly adjacent to it and this oh will try to condense with this h and of course this oh will try to condense with this h which is of course lying adjacent to it so can i write now this o then i have ch of course ch then ch3 i have written ch3 this ch2 i have written here this is co carbonyl group then of course this o o then ch this is the ch this is c2h5 i can write ch2 ch3 or c2h5 when i am only the same thing and then the ch2 ch2 c double bond o and of course n times this is the structure which is called phbv and it is actually used in orthopedic devices in order to control and of course in controlling the release of drugs this is one of the best example of a biodegradable polymer the second example which i have to take up right now is nylon 2 and nylon 6 nylon 2 we have done of course in bio there this is an amino acid and that amino acid is actually called glycine this is an amino acid called glycine and in the same way nylon 6 if you remember we have already done and it is alpha amino caproic acid i said this is alpha amino caproic acid now again we will try to condense both of them as i said h from here and oh from here will be removed h from here of course once you try to condense both of them and oh from the adjacent molecule if you try to condense this i hope now it is clear this is nh this is ch2 c double bond o this is nh 
CH2 whole fifth C double bond O n times. This is another example of a biodegradable polymer, which is of course again nylon two and nylon six or nylon two comma six. Need not to tell you why it is abbreviated as two and six because it contains glycine and alpha amino acid, uh, alpha uh, um, uh, amino caproic acid. I'm sorry, and it is again used in the same orthopedic devices and in order to control the release of drugs. So these are the two examples of biodegradable polymer that we have done. Now let me take up the examples, or before I should proceed for the next examples, uh, the most important thing which I can take up right now is nothing but these biodegradable polymers. Of course, are easily being decomposed by the action of microorganism, as I said. And as you can see from here, since it is one of the first example, is nothing but it is a polyester. If I am not wrong, a carboxylic acid uh, is condensed with OH. And in the second case, it is a carboxylic acid with amine. So it is one of the example of a polyamide. Now let me take up the next example. As I said, I have already discussed uh, just few minutes back that the polyamide. I have two examples. One is nylon six comma six and nylon six. Both the examples we have already discussed. In fact, in my first lecture, the next type is polyolefins or polyalkenes. We have already done so many examples of it, which include polythene, which include polypropene, which include PVC, styrene, Teflon, polyacrylonitrile, bunyan, bunyan. These all are the examples of uh, polyolefins or polyalkenes. The next example that I have to take up is of natural rubber, which of course is nothing but it is the cis 1.4 polyisoprene unit. Isoprene, of course, is nothing but this is 2 methyl buta 1,3 diene. If you can recall in my first lecture, I told you buta 1,3 diene is one thing which is actually available in the rubber. Now, uh, just put here CS3, you will get isoprene, which is as I said, 2 methyl buta 1,3 diene. And if I try to polymerize this once again by using the same method, you will come across that this bond will be shifted here. This will be shifted here. It means my polymerization chain is this CH2. Then I have C, then CS3, then double bond, this double bond, then CH, then of course CH2 and N times. This uh, natural rubber, which I have actually, uh, I mean, I was talking about, which of course has, is said cis 1,4 polyisoprene, it contains weak Van der Waals forces. That's why it will be categorized as an elastic polymer that we will study once we will try to classify the polymers. Now, natural polymer can of course be converted into synthetic rubber or natural rubber can be converted into synthetic rubber and it can be done by one of the process that we will take up in our next lecture that's vulcanization of rubber. I will take up that but let's quickly take up synthetic rubber. Although there are three examples of synthetic rubber we have to actually take up. I have already discussed two of them. One of them is Buna S and of course another is Buna N. When you talk about Buna S and Buna N and now if I start with synthetic rubber, the third example of course I have to take up is chloroprene. Chloroprene or there is another thing which is the, this is the monomer. Polymer is of course called neoprene. And if I am not wrong, the meaning of this word neo means naya. Naya means synthetic. This is how I can recall. That's why I said synthetic rubber contain. And very simply, I, I said, if you remember, mark my words what I said. I said, we have buta 1,3 diene. If we have buta 1,3 diene, and if I am going to place a 1 chlorine, it means if at the second position it is methyl, it is called isoprene. And if it is chloro, then it is called uh, chloroprene, which is of course a synthetic rubber. Now, again, if I try to polymerize this chloroprene molecule or N molecules of chloroprene, this will be shifted here, this will be shifted here, you will get CH2, then C, Cl double bond, then CH single bond CH2 N times, and this is nothing but it is called neoprene, or it is one of the best examples of polychloroprene, right? Uh, these uh, synthetic rubber, we will discuss one by one where exactly they are being used. Uh, as well as natural rubber we have done. 
I will discuss in my next lecture, of course, where uh, the how it is possible to convert the natural rubber into synthetic rubber. One of the best example uh, I will try to give you whenever uh, we will take up the next lecture. Uh, as well as Buna S, Buna N, we have already done. So we will discuss all these things in our next se session or maybe in the next lecture whenever we will discuss. It must be the third lecture. Uh, thank you so much for this thing. If you want, if you have any doubt, you can post. Thank you so much.